Good morning and many thanks for the opportunity to come and speak here today. Um, it's hard to believe that but it's 14 years ago since I first came to work at the, the National Institute under the direction of Martin Wheel and James Sefton. Um, I didn't know it then but uh, the project that I was engaged to work on has come to dominate the vast majority of my working life right up to the present day. So what is it that we've been doing during these last 14 years? Well, uh, we've been, as this slide indicates, we've been building a structural dynamic microsimulation model at the National Institute. This model goes by the name of LINDA, the Lifetime Income Distribution Analysis Model, and SID, the Simulator of Individual dyna Dynamic Decisions. I will begin by defining what SID and LINDA are before providing some additional details of the modeling approach. I'll then go into some detail about what the, discussing what the model is good to for, for analyzing uh, before finishing up with some next steps in this, uh, this research project. So SID, the simulator of individual dynamic decisions, is a framework for structural dynamic microsimulation modeling. Working backwards through this description, we have a model in the sense that it is uh, a stu the, the structure provides a stylized analytical description of reality. It is a microsimulation in the sense that it projects the circumstances of individual adults. It's dynamic in the sense that it projects adults through time. And it's structural, structural in the sense that labor and savings decisions are based on the life cycle framework. For those of you who are familiar with these sorts of things, the life cycle decision problem is solved using dynamic programming methods. Finally, SID is a framework in the sense that it is designed to facilitate adaptation to alternative contexts. LINDA, in contrast, is the UK parameterization of the SID framework. SID has also been previously parametrized for the, uh, the contexts observed in Ireland and Italy. The model is designed to generate panel data for a simulated population. It takes in data observed for a reference population cross-section of adults, um, and these data are observed at a point in time, and then it projects those data both forward and backward through time. The backward projections are necessary to build up a picture of life, lifetime circumstances, and when the model comes to project the population forward through time, it is designed to reflect the evolving population cross-section. The evolving cross-section is important to capture in order to permit the model to reflect nationally representative statistics, including measures of relative poverty and the evolving government budget. A big step for us uh, in 2016 was to make the model freely available for download from the internet via the website www.simdynamics.org. Now, the, the characteristics that are projected for each adult um, in the, by, the, by the model have been carefully selected to reflect those characteristics which we believe to be most important in determining reactions or the effects of government policy on things like employment and savings decisions. So we have a, a range of characteristics uh, covering demographic uh, status, things like relationship status, number and age of dependent children, um, and, uh, and, and so on. Um, we have uh, education um, s statistics that reflect the education status of each adult, the evolving health status and the time of death, uh, employment and employment income, savings and savings income. Importantly, the vast majority of these characteristics can be simulated in a way that is designed to capture the uncertainty associated with intertemporal development. You may, for example, know your relationship status today, but you, uh, you, you can only know your relationship status in the future with some uncertainty, and the model is designed to take that uncertainty into consideration. 
the four characteristics in, indicated in this slide uh, by asterisks are, uh, are those that need to be simulated in a, uh, a, a deterministic fashion. Uh, all others can be, be simulated that, in a way that takes into account uh, uncertainty into account. Now the model has been designed for use by non-specialists and really here we have in mind analysts at Whitehall. Model parameters are altered through Excel and an Excel front end is provided for the UK variant Linda. Computations are conducted using a standalone executable which is programmed in Fortran, the source code of which can also be obtained uh, via the, the internet site that I referred to just a moment ago. Outputs from the model include panel data for the simulated population, which are output in a format that is designed so that it can be imported into most popular statistical packages for secondary analysis. Furthermore, the model generates a selected set of summary statistics which are reported in Excel files, and these statistics are really designed to give you a, an overview of the implications of each alternative simulated environment. The development for this model has been supported by a wide range of funders, including uh, UK government, um, HM Treasury, Revenue and Customs, Department for Work and Pensions, uh, academic organisations, including the Economic and Social Research Council and the Australian Research Council, and, uh, and, and third uh, party organizations, um, usually some form of ch charity, including the Leverhulme Trust and the Joseph Rowntree Foundation. So what is the, the model good for? Well, I originally had planned uh, to provide a, a seri series of um, slides here which uh, gave a summary or an overview of the kind of results that we have reported previously in the, in the published literature. These kind of results would have provided a, 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 an overview of the kind of um, statistics that the model can be used to generate. However, I, I was persuaded uh, by an article in last week's Financial Times to spend a lot more time here focusing on the question of what the framework is actually good for. And, uh, and that article was, a, was entitled uh, Bank of England's Haldane Admits Crisis in Economic Forecasts. In that article, the, um, that article quotes uh, Mr. Haldane as, uh, as saying that it's a fair cop to say that the profession is in some degree uh, in crisis. He, it, the article goes on to note that uh, Mr. Haldane's uh, recognition of the problems inherent in placing too much reliance on large models of the economy which assume people always behave rationally. It also describes uh, a, a preference to move away from narrow and fragile models to a broader analysis which encompasses insights from other disciplines. Now, these comments refer specifically uh, to, uh, to the, um, the forecasting models that are administered um, at the Bank of England. And th those models actually differ fairly substantively um, from the model that I am discussing here. Nevertheless, the general um, nature of these points um, can just as easily easily be applied to the model that I'm discussing here. The model that that I'm referring to here is is actually based on this this fundamental assumption that people behave react, uh, uh, always behave rationally. Um, it's a, a complex structure that is somewhat arguably fragile certainly to uh, the the way that the economy is likely to um, you know uh, project out, forward through time. So uh, so it's worth um, trying to respond directly to these sorts of points um, here. Now let me say right from the outset that this model is not an appropriate tool for forecasting the future state of the economy. Now 
Indeed, I would go further and say that this kind of analytical tool that I'm discussing here was never uh, a reasonably assumed to be a, 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 a tool for forecasting the state of the economy. You know, even prior to the shortcomings of, uh, of, of many economic constructs that uh, that were sort of made clear uh, by the, the advent of the global financial crisis. And the reason for that is really very simple. The model is highly stylized and omits, mu omits much of the complexity that is likely to determine the economy's future traje trajectory. That kind of uncertainty is completely absent in this model. And for that reason, this model cannot say anything about it. And if it can't say anything about, you know, all of this, the, the bearing that this complexity has on projections going forward, then the tool itself is not an appropriate, uh, uh, um, is not appropriate for making forecasts concerning the state of the economy. Now, this, this point raises two key questions. First of all, can the stylizations that are built into the model at present be relaxed to obtain a tool that is suitable for forecasting the future state of the economy? And secondly, what practical uses can the existing version of the model be put to? So concerning the first of these questions, um, the stylizations are, are effectively made necessary by the numerical burden of the life cycle framework in context of existing technology, and really I have in mind here computing technology. The, the, at the heart of this model structure is a simple translation from incentives into, de into decisions. Now, the approach that uh, the economics profession has taken uh, or has adopted to translate, in translate incentives into decisions in this context um, is, is the life cycle framework. And whenever you take uncertainty into consideration in this, in this sort of environment, certainly the environment that the model reflects, uh, you are really uh, subject to a very substantive numerical burden. I should mo mention right from the outset that the life cycle framework actually doesn't have really any testable implications. That's why it's a framework and not a, a theory or a, or, or, a, or a clear description of reality. It is simply a method of translating incentives into decisions. You might criticize um, the, uh, the, the specific formulations that um, or, or implementations of the framework that uh, have been adopted uh, by the literature, but um, uh, but if you um, are willing to accept that incentives are important drivers of decisions, then the life cycle framework is really the the approach that uh, that that the uh, that the profession has really thought is best adapted to reflect this, and uh, and so the framework itself shouldn't really be in, in question. So, um, so given that uh, that this framework itself em embodies a, a substantive numerical burden, and that addressing that burden can only be achieved uh, by implementing very significant stylizations in context of the limitations of existing computing technology, uh, what are we left with? You know, is this model of any practical use? Well, the model itself is designed, uh, as I said in a previous slide, to capture the kind of characteristics that we think of as being most important in determining uh, the reactions or the effects of alternative government policies. Certainly policies that, it, uh, that um, influence uh, employment and savings decisions. And, uh, and in that context, the model can be used, uh, I believe, to forecast the effects of policy counterfactuals in controlled economic contexts. Now, th this is an, a really important point to, to, uh, to understand. 
at a fundamental level, you can't use the model to forecast the future state of the economy. But you can use it. It is a reasonable tool to forecast the effects of policy counterfactuals. What you do is you take you know, uh, the status quo policy environment and you project an entire population uh, uh, um, into the future, for example, based on that set of assumptions. You then project the same population under identical assumptions except for altering the uh, the policy counterfactual that you're, um, you're you're particularly interested in you generate the population again under those sets of, that alternative set of assumptions and then you can get a measure of the effects of the policy counterfactuals by subtracting the status the, the simulated um, uh, by subtracting statistics calculated uh, based on the status quo simulation from the same statistics calculated using the policy counterfactual simulation. And that gives you a, a, a measure of the effect of the, the, the policy alternative. Now, I can go, it, it, this model can even go further in the sense that not only will, is it capable of projecting a point estimate for the effects of the policy counterfactual, but it can also generate a measure of the uncertainty that is associated with those point estimates, at where the uncertainty itself can be generated using all of the measures of uncertainty that are explicitly represented within the model structure. So, um, so it, it is a really very, I, I believe, a really powerful tool for project for forecasting the effects of policy counterfactuals in controlled economic contexts. And this should really be a, a, a key margin of interest um, for policymakers. Effectively, it is asking the question, you know, what impact will decisions that are within our power to alter have on the economy going forward? And the idea is that the effect of all those other things, that, that large degree of, uh, of complexity that is stylized out of the model, the idea is that all the effects of all these things on the economy are effectively differenced out by subtracting the policy environment generated on the policy uh, under the status quo from the, the same policy environment uh, under the, the policy counterfactual. It's like a uh, generating a, uh, um, a synthetic differences and differences analysis, if you like. Now, that said, um, the the model that uh, I'm describing here um, is, uh, is 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 different from a, a, a very wide array um, of similar analytical structures. Um, in it, the degree to which behavioral responses are, uh, are, are simulated on the basis of, of the life cycle framework. There are very many micro, uh, um, dynamic micro simulation models out there where such models do include behavioral responses generated on the basis of a, uh, a, a structural sort of foundation. Uh, these, these models typically focus explicitly on employment decisions. And this is useful because it helps to simplify the problem. Very few models um, exist which simulate both sim savings and employment decisions in context of a wide array of, of measures of uncertainty in terms of um, the ev evolution of the of the. Uh, the economic environment. And that's where the, the value added of this model really comes in. So what, what this means, what this actually effectively means is that the model, this model is ideal for exploring the implications of policy counterfactuals where behavioral, behavioral responses are considered important. Now, this is obviously the case wherever policy is explicitly designed to influence behavior. But I should note that it becomes increasingly important as the time horizon that you're interested in is lengthened. Now, to explain the second point a little bit more, um, it may be that uh, um, 
uh, a particular policy reform that you're interested in isn't actually designed to affect behavior. You anticipate it to have some bearing, I suppose, almost all policy will have some bearing on, on behavior, but this is sort of a secondary issue of concern. However, as you go further and further into time, uh, out into the future, uh, even marginal decisions, uh, variations in decisions taken today, can build up through time to have a, a, a pronounced bearing on where you end up at, at, a, at a reasonably long time horizon. For example, employment decisions may be uh, affected by a very small amount by a tax change um, it, it, when considered next year or the year after or the year after that. However, um, if uh, the tax change does uh, impact employment decisions marginally um, today, uh, that is likely to affect incomes uh, marginally, even if only marginally, you know, today. And that will have a, a bearing on, on savings today. And these, the, save, the, the bearing on savings is likely to accumulate through time so that... In, at a, at a long time horizon, for example, 25 years or so, uh, you may find that um, what was a minor effect in, in, at a one year horizon really becomes a very significant effect at, uh, at the longer time horizon. Now, most of our, our previous work using this model structure has focused predominantly on pensions and pension policy, and I provide some, some references um, that can be found uh, for download via the, 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 the website I referred to earlier uh, on, this, uh, on this slide. It, the model was also used by the Joseph Roundtree Foundation last year um, when it came to price and quantify the effects of the reforms that they were suggesting in their anti-poverty strategy. Um, and this was a, a useful framework, um, primarily because at long time horizon, the Joseph Roundtree Foundation um, in, uh, identified that although there was a, a, a very large literature concerning poverty, uh, measures of poverty, uh, the bearing of policy alternatives on poverty uh, to very short time horizons, there was almost nothing that considered the long term uh, view of what uh, of how policy would affect uh, poverty going forward. And so Linda, the, the, that long term perspective put a, a, um, emphasis on, a, on an analytical structure like Linda. Um, a, a secondary yeah, field uh, of use for this kind of uh, modeling approach is really the to test alternative uh, the empirical support for alternative behavioral assumptions effectively behavior concerning employment decisions and savings decisions as is at the heart of this model structure as I mentioned before furthermore these decision the, this model structure is reasonably realistic and so the uh, the it's an uh, this this structure provides an ideal framework for considering uh, whether the uh, whether alternative behavioral assumptions provide a a, a better reflection um, of the observed data than uh, than than otherwise so what next concerning this uh, the, this um, uh, research agenda well First of all, from a develop developmental point of view, the, the vast majority of our work is focused on expanding model states uh, up to the present time. And this is likely to go on uh, as computing power um, expands. Here, the most, uh, the most pressing things to look at really are gender, um, to distinguish adults in the in the simulated population by whether they're male or female, and housing. Uh, which is actually a very challenging problem because of the the various transaction costs uh, and uh, and and the special nature of housing um, that, uh, that that apply. We'd also like to be building in macroeconomic endogeneity into the model, effectively allowing wages to respond to employment decisions and allowing savings and re asset returns to respond to, uh, to, to savings decisions. 
and we'd like to improve the cloud computing integration of the model to offset the computational burden that I mentioned as being really, I guess, the Achilles heel of this kind of analytical approach. There's already some cloud computing integration built into the model structure. We'd like to improve on that in the future. From an academic perspective, as I mentioned in the immediately preceding uh, slide, really, I guess we will, um, we intend to be focusing primarily on parameterization of the model, uh, looking at empirical support for behavioral alternatives, and um, to explore the implications of alternative power policy counterfactuals. Finally, we're particularly interested at the moment in trying to expand the user base. Now that's both, you know, as a, as a, a sort of uh, um, uh, public benefit uh, uh, perspective, uh, because we believe that, you know, it doesn't make much sense for new researchers in this field to effectively reinvent the wheel over a very extended period of time. They might as well take what we have done um, and, uh, and build from there. Um, to avoid sort of a, a, a massive loss, really, and um, in terms of or inefficiency in terms of, you know, lost time. Um, but also because of the substantive economies of scale that exist, effectively, the more people who are working on this stuff uh, on a common sort of framework, uh, the, the greater the likelihood that the framework itself will a be, uh, be 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 well validated, and uh, and B will also be as effective and efficient um, as it, it possibly can, and um, and so we're we're keen to uh, to to pursue this um, via a number of approaches. One of which is is obviously our online effort uh, going forward. Many thanks for your attention, and uh, that's where I finish.